People often ask me, how do I know what wired gauge cables to choose? It mostly happens with analog audio cable selection, but more and more this question comes up regarding digital video cables as well. Now this is one of those issues that could be easily solved using Ohm's Law if you have access to all the data on the cable and the signal properties. But unfortunately, seldom do manufacturers provide enough data to be able to accurately solve using Ohm's Law. So instead, we'll look at some rules of thumb to follow when you're making your cable selection. The main thing to remember is that every wire has resistance. That's to say the opposition of the flow of electrons. Now that resistance comes from the nature of the material used to make the wire and from its thickness. This is the resistive component, which is treated just like you are placing a resistor right in the line. It reduces the flow of current through the cable. Now as an example, let's say we're running 100 feet of speaker cable connected to an amplifier with, mm, let's say, a 10 volt output. We have an 8 ohm speaker impedance. So we'll compare the differences between a 24 gauge and a 16 gauge cable. Here's the data on the 24 gauge speaker cable. You see here that the resistance is 23.3 ohms per thousand feet. That's 2.33 ohms per hundred feet, which will add to the speaker load to get a total resistance of 10.33 ohms in the circuit. Now, using Ohm's law, we divide 10 volts by the circuit resistance to get 0.968 amps of current in the total circuit. Then, once we know that, we multiply the current by the cable resistance to get 2.26 volts lost in the 100-foot cable run. Yikes! That's almost a quarter of the amplifier's power output lost. Poof! Now, let's do the same thing for the 16-gauge cable. Here, the resistance is 4 ohms per thousand, which is 0 0.4 ohms per hundred feet. Add this to the speaker load to get 8.4 ohms. Now we divide 10 volts by 8.4 ohms to get 1.19 amps, which we'll multiply then by 0 0.4 to get 0 0.476 volts lost. Now we're talking. That's less than 5% loss over the entire 100 feet of cable. Now additionally, there's a lesser non-resistant component called reactants. This is the component that opposes the flow of electrons from the effective inductance or capacitance. Now in a cable with more than one wire, like we typically use in Pro-AV, the electromagnetic field created by the positive wire flowing in one direction opposes the flow of electrons in the negative wire. This is capacitive reactance, which opposes any change in voltage. Now inversely, a coil of wire laying on the floor creates an inductive reactance, which will oppose any change in current flow. Now this means that in addition to the resistance of the wire itself, reactance will even further reduce the current flow through that cable. So here are some important things to remember. The thicker the wire, the lower the resistance. The shorter the wire, the lower the resistance. The better the dielectric insulation between the wires, the lower the capacitive reactance. The more direct the path of the cable run from the source to the destination, the lower the inductive reactance. And the higher the signal frequency, the more this affects the signal strength.